Hello guys, welcome back. Today we are doing a garden Q&A over on Instagram. I asked you guys to leave me any garden questions you had. I've been receiving a ton, which is fair. It's definitely garden planning season. We are all sitting down and trying to figure out everything. And I know as a beginner gardener, you can have a million and one questions. I'm really excited to jump in today's video. There were a lot of questions that you guys asked that were very similar. So you guys are all kind of thinking the same thing and you asked me so many good questions. So let's just go ahead and jump right in. So question number one is what materials did you use to create your archway garden? Also, what are the measurements? I guess you are talking about my trellis tunnel space. That is a 20 by four and a half foot area. We used five cattle panels over there, which the cattle panels I believe are 16, are they 16 by four? I believe they're 16 by four. I could be slightly off on that. So they're kind of weird to transport. There's been a few times we transported the cattle panels with a truck. There's been a few times where we used a car with straps. Uh, we had to get kind of creative because we don't have a truck. So we either have to borrow a truck or get creative with what we had. And cattle panels can be kind of tricky. They're heavy as well. So I got mine from Tractor Supply, um, I believe. All we've used to connect them was some T-post clips and T-post. Um, having a driver for like a T-post driver for that is really handy. Um, but overall, it's a pretty cheap way to do trellising. I have technically seven cattle panels in my yard with an archway, and they're just really easy to put up. They're easy to um, honestly change and take down. I won't be changing up any of my arches this year, um, but it is probably one of the cheapest way you can do a uh, vertical gardening if you're wanting to do vertical gardening. All right, so we got a ton of loofah questions, so let's just break them down. Will I be growing loofah again this year? Yes. How do I attach the vine to the trellis? So honestly, the plant will start to grow and just poke it up on in there and the vine will do the rest. As long as it's touching the fencing and you help maneuver it where you want to go just a little bit, the plant will do majority of that job. Um, did I plant just one loofah or did I plant multiple plants last year? So if you did not see my trellis space, I didn't think my loofah plant was going to take up all 20 feet, but it probably could have took up even more than the whole 20 feet long trellis. I planted two plants. Loofahs are massive, they go absolutely wild. Off those two plants, I got roughly 50 loofahs. So another question I got was how to grow loofah in zone 6B. So I in zone 6B as well, 6B can range on your frost dates, even though you are zone 6B, that doesn't really matter. So check your frost dates. Honestly, I have grown loofah twice now. Year one was a miserable fail. I actually direct sowed year one and with the sowing instructions on the seed pack, it does say to direct sow, but I had such crappy luck direct sowing because we also had a really wet spring um, that year that I direct sowed. It was just kind of a mess. Everything was against me that year with Lupa. So this last year, I actually started my seeds six weeks ahead of time inside and I figured, you know what? If these fail, I'll just direct sow again and try again that way, or I'll have some started plants. So I started six of them. I gifted two of them away, and then I went to plant them out, and I just chose my strongest two from starting them inside. That's one reason why I, st I started so many inside, because I wanted just to take the two strongest plants and then just toss the rest, just because I knew... Um, it could be kind of tricky. Honestly, with um, my trellis, I was able to get 10 loofahs fully dry on the vine, um, but I had, what, 40 of those were still green at the end of the year. We did have an early frost this year, so if I would have probably had an extra two weeks this year, which the previous years gifted me, unlike last year, um, I probably would have gotten a lot more loofahs dried on the vine. My loofahs all those like 40 loofahs were really just starting to get to the point where they were about to dry out. So with me being in Kansas zone 6B, my average last frost is around April 16th, but I didn't plant out my loofahs until the beginning of May. Again, simply because um, our weather's kind of finicky and loofah is one of those really warm weather plants and I didn't want to risk planting them out and we get a cold snap. So I just waited till the first week of May um, and I, I got a really great harvest. I'm obviously going to grow them again, but I'm growing them again simply because I gifted a lot of them this year, uh, which was really fun. And I thought the loofah was just so magical that there's no way I'm, I'm not going to grow again. 
All right, so next question is, do you ever start seeds inside earlier than the package suggests? If so, which ones? Um, okay, this is kind of tricky because I have in the past and I, I, I'm i not anymore simply because I've just ran into so many different problems. So my first two years or necessarily, yeah, yeah, my first two years, my grow lights weren't strong. So I got away with being able to start a lot earlier. I would say if, you're, if your lights are weaker, you could probably get away with starting just a little bit earlier. But this last year, I actually got like way better grow lights um, and they're a lot stronger. And I noticed that no matter what, if I use those lights, my plants are going to grow really fast and it's just not smart for me to do anything sooner. And honestly, if you're, so the reason why like there's that suggested date is mostly because like the plants will really start to take off by like that certain point. Like you'll notice with tomatoes, they'll be small, they'll get bigger, and then out of nowhere, they are huge. A tomato plant, I think all around takes like 75 to 90 days to fully fruit. So if it's one of those things, it's pretty fast growing. A few weeks can mean a lot of difference and you don't wanna start too early because again, so for example, with my frost dates, Kansas is really finicky. I'm sure a lot of areas are pretty finicky like this when it comes to late or like early spring. We always will either get warm and stay warm or we'll get warm and then we'll have a cold snap, get warm and then like have another cold snap and we'll do this on and off limbo for a few weeks. So I have kind of pushed back my planting for a lot of those like frost tender annuals just a few weeks to make sure that I'm not going to plant anything out too early because a lot of those plants really won't like that cold and it will stress them out as well. So you're just kind of, you're just trying to avoid stressing out your plants before you can get them in the ground and they will be happy. So that is another reason why I actually won't start my, like I'm not starting my tomatoes this year until I believe like seven seven six seven weeks before like may 1st so i'm not even going to be starting my tomatoes until mid march which i believe is a whole four to six weeks later than i have done the, the past three years and it's mostly because of lighting and i've just ran into problems with plants getting big and when plants get big then you have to up pot and that's one more money in potting soil. It's more money in material, especially if you don't have the equipment to up pot everything. It can be stressful. It's time consuming. So I just advise less is more. That was a very long explanation there. All right. So my yard is shaded. What part shade veggies are your fave to grow? So it really depends on how shady the area is. Um, you can get away with doing a lot more leafy greens in shady areas. So think spinach, lettuce, collards, kale. Um, you can plant like broccoli and cabbage in like semi shaded areas as well. They might not get as big of a head. That's really kind of it. I believe carrots you can. I've never grown carrots in a more shaded area. Um, but you can't do too much in a shaded area. You can do a lot more like perennial type of, um, like shrubber, like shrubbery and stuff like that. So I really like this next question. Can I cook with slicing tomatoes? I bought seeds and I don't really like raw tomatoes. You can cook with a slicing tomato. So like any type of beef steak or tomato like that. It's going to be very watery and you're going to notice there's not going to be much depth in the flavor. Personally, I don't like raw tomatoes either. So I plant all paste varieties and I noticed that when I plant my own paste varieties, since they're not as like watery, they're just a lot more flavorful. So in the summer months when I plant my own tomatoes, I plant all paste and I actually will eat some of those fresh. I'm not like, I won't do a lot. I'm still very minimal on the fresh tomatoes I will eat, but I personally do all paste varieties because I make sauce and salsa. If you're looking to do a salsa, um, you can obviously use a slicing tomato as well, um, but you're probably not going to have the consistency you want unless you really, really cook down that tomato. So I would personally just buy a pack of like Romas or San Morzanos, depending on if you want to do a bush or a vining type of tomato. Um, 
but if I were you, I would just I would just spend the extra few dollars and probably get a paste variety because you'll probably end up liking that way more and you'll probably end up growing tomatoes. Because uh, I now devote about a third of my garden to tomatoes and tomato products that I produce and I honestly barely eat a single one. It's mostly my husband that I, I slice them for. Next up, what soil is best for starting seeds? I personally don't like seed starting mixes because they don't really have much nutrition in them. If you use a seed starting mix, you're going to have to start feeding your plants a lot sooner than you would if you didn't. Um, so when it comes to doing any type of seed starting, I just get some type of organic potting mix. If it's organic potting mix, uh, or like a container mix that is probably going to be your best option that is what i've used every single time minus um i did use a seed starting mix one year and i was like why are my plants doing so bad and i didn't know that you had to feed your plant like i didn't realize there was like barely any nutrition in it so yeah i like to use just a regular everyday organic potting mix and it works great what was the tool you showed that made digging a quick whole effortless okay so I think you're talking about a dibber um, I have a few dibbers and I really really like them they work really well to make a small hole to a big hole within seconds they are probably my most used hand tool um, I don't I use that probably more to plant than I use like your everyday planting shovel um, and they're pretty cheap. I think you can typically find them for about 10 bucks. They're really handy to have and especially if you are planting any type of like garlic or onion, they work really great. Last year was such a problem with bad bugs. I'm trying to decide between beneficial insects or neem. Okay, so I actually had a few questions like this and this was something I really experimented with last year and I was so happy with the results. Okay, Every single year, minus last year, I have used neem oil or like some type of organic pesticide, mostly neem oil though. Um, and I never had a single monarch butterfly caterpillar in my yard ever. I never had a like I never had any of this. And then this last year, I didn't use any neem. So I ended up realizing after a few people told me, and I ended up researching it, that apparently monarchs hate neem and it totally makes sense i had zero neem in my garden this year and i had more beneficial bugs than i could ever imagine i never really had an issue with beneficial bugs prior but one thing i really never knew about neem the, the everyone states that neem is safe for beneficial bugs and insects but honestly i'm i kind of believe it's i don't think it is i mean it's going to kill any type of caterpillar any type of caterpillar that's going to that's going to include like a monarch caterpillar or swallowtail caterpillar i had so many butterflies in this garden this year it was insane especially ladybug larva so okay i'm a huge fan of beneficial insects but here's the thing with beneficial insects my garden is now year six i've been using beneficial insects and neem on and off and i've been trying to establish populations this last year again was my best year for establishment because I already had a lot of populations going, but it takes some time with beneficial insects. One thing I did last year that you have to do kind of repetitively is beneficial nematodes. And I really, really loved beneficial nematodes because I was having a problem with grubs and grubs were like taking over my garden to where I didn't have like any earthworms and it was like a serious problem. And then I ended up getting all my earthworm populations back up. I sprayed nematodes, I think three or four times over like a six to eight month period last year. And it worked wonders for my garden. That was really the only thing I did last year as far as like pest management goes. Um, I've released ladybugs in the past, but I had a ton of ladybugs. Um, but yeah, honestly, huge believer of beneficial insects. That was a long explanation, I'm sorry. But um, they can take some time to get established. So it really depends on what what your goal is. If you're having like a significant problem with a plant and you have to do something, sometimes just isolating one or two plants once it becomes a problem. Like I have done this in the past where I won't spray majority of the garden, but say like I have a tomato plant and it is just overwhelmed with aphids. 
I will spray that plant um, just because I do have the stuff on hand. Um, I've never played with BT or anything like that, but there's a lot of people who love BT. I actually thought about attempting to use BT to inject squash to help with a squash vine board because that is just an absolute terrible problem here and I can't get past squash vine board. It's trash. And apparently a beneficial nematodes um, is supposed to help with squash vine board, but I still ended up having that problem this year. So, I mean, beneficial insects are not like, they're not guaranteed as much as an insecticide. In, in, I would include neem into that category of would be. So it really just depends on your space. Uh, but neem is obviously going to be a better option than something less natural. All right, how do you keep squirrels from eating your sunflower seeds when they are still on the plant? Uh, it really just comes down to throwing them scraps on a separate area of your yard. I will say though that this last year, my squirrels were bold and they had access to a free compost pile. But once they started on the sunflowers, they really did not stop last year. And I looked like a crazy person. I would be like doing dishes in my kitchen, looking out at my garden. And next thing you know, I see a squirrel going toward my sunflower. And by the time I would like get outside and run out there, the squirrel would be like at the sunflower and I'd be running and chasing after it. And it was an ongoing game with the squirrels last year. It was, they were very pesky last year. And that was the first time I really had that type of problem. But I have noticed that what I will do in the past, I think it was more of a problem this year because my chickens got a lot of like my deadheaded sunflowers and stuff like that. But I would always go throw old sunflowers or old food in like a whole other area of the yard in a separate corner, just easy access for them. And they would typically leave stuff alone. But again, that didn't really help this year. Sometimes there's not much you can do unless you like create a full blown like netting contraption, which I do plan to actually build some type of like pop or netting situation for my strawberries because I think I got maybe 10 strawberries last year because the birds and the squirrels would not quit. All right, so can you give me some tips on maximizing my space and understanding secession sewing? I advise knowing your last expectant average frost and your first expectant average frost and finding out the number of days between those average days. Typically, you will notice you will get like one to 14 more days, if not more out of those average days, but that is roughly how many days you will get in your planting zone without frost. That is important to know if you want to maximize out your space in succession sowing. So learning to succession sow can be slightly tricky and it takes some work to really figure out. So this is where garden planning is like key. Sitting down, taking your seed packets, writing out how many weeks before you need to sow them outside to start them inside, how many days to maturity. Writing out all those key points will give you a better idea on how long that plant will live in your garden. I like to secession sow a lot with green beans, mostly because green beans are a 50 to 60 day window to maturity. They're pretty quick. So for example, the garlic will be harvested come mid-June, like that second to third week of June, and then I will turn around and plant green beans, and then I will be able to harvest green beans throughout that space until roughly like mid mid to late August depending on when I would want to pull those green bean plants and then I can actually get a third secession wave of anything I would want to plant for fall because here like come mid August I have roughly like 60 more days I could get away with planting one more round of green beans to where I would get like garlic, green beans, and then another round of green beans, or I could get garlic, green beans, and then turn around and plant that bed with broccoli. And then that broccoli will actually live in my garden through like December and January into like a super deep frost will completely kill it off unless I put some type of frost fabric over it. So that way you can kind of see how a spring into a summer into a fall garden could play out, but it really takes a lot of planning on your part and it's going to take a few years to really get it down. Even when I've done some of my best planning, I've either got so far away from the next step and I didn't start my other stuff in time. It really is just learning 
the groove of gardening. Just like when you started cooking, I'm sure it didn't feel natural to you. Gardening probably won't either for the first few years. And you only have one chance every year to try something new. So my best advice with that is sit down with your seed packets, write every detail down in categories, and that way you can see everything live on one piece of paper together. And then you kind of group stuff together and pick and choose and see where you might be able to plant and then replant throughout the season. So again, do do some garden planning. And if you're able to do that now, come planting and like throughout summer when you're really busy, it takes so much of like that guesswork out and you already have a plan so you just know what to do next. What vegetables do you need to start inside? You don't need to start really anything inside. It really just depends on what you wanna grow and where you live. Um, it's really going to determine on what you can get away with. I love direct sowing. Direct sowing is 10 times easier. Um, you don't have to deal with any type of seed starting or seed starting cleanup or any extra supplies like lighting and shelving and all that. That stuff can get very expensive. Um, and that's something that I ended up just kind of growing into throughout the years. I started really, really small, um, especially if you are starting a smaller garden, you could even get away with going to your local nursery and buying a bunch of plant starts. Even like Facebook Marketplace, you'll tend to see like plant starts that people are selling for options. Um, but really, you don't have to really start anything inside. There's actually quite a few plants that are directed to not start inside. Like a lot of your vining crops, like I mentioned with the loofah earlier, you really aren't advised to do inside. A lot of your squashes, you're not advised to start inside. Um, sunflowers aren't really advised to start inside. Carrots aren't advised to start inside. So it really, again, just depends. Um, it, direct sowing is great. So if you have a long extended season, um, for example, my sister can actually start to direct sow right now in her space, which I'm very envious of. Uh, so it just, it really just depends. Do some research and you really don't have to start anything inside. Let's do a few more and then we're going to sum things up. So a few plants for absolute beginners. I'm trying to start small slash container gardening ideas. I started with one garden bed and a handful of planters. Um, and you can get away with like doing one tomato plant, a lettuce plant some flowers. You can dabble in a little bit of everything. So that's always really fun. Oh, hi. Everyone say hi to Miss Khaleesi. Hi, baby. Thanks for joining. But container gardening wise, you can do a lot. I mean, depending on the size of a container, if the container is a decent size, you can do a tomato um, or you can do like a really big sunflower. But if you have smaller containers, you can find a lot of like dwarf varieties of seeds. You can like find little tomato plants, bush tomato plants over anything uh, indeterminate. So determinate versus indeterminate. So indeterminate means like it's going to constantly grow and a determinate plant means more of a bush variety. Um, I've done a lot of peppers in containers. They do great. There's a lot of things that do great in tomato uh, containers. I know a lot of people who've done a little bit of everything in containers. Uh, but if you're wanting to dabble in just a few things, my best advice with that is just what what do you eat right now? Because if you grow what you are already eating, you're going to see that value and you might want to grow bigger the following year. Where do you get majority of your seeds from? I get my seeds from all over. This year, I majority got mine from Johnny's and Botanical Interest. I've actually grown from Botanical Interest all six years of my garden. I really like their seeds. They've always worked really well. I've ordered from Renee's Garden. I really like their varieties. They have some really cool ones. I think Peace Valley was another one I've ordered from before. I kind of just, I will search like organic seeds or whatever I'm looking for. I have a few um like medical seeds, so like peppermint and white sage which that was a really cool website. I can't remember the name of it at the moment, but you can find some really cool seed companies. I've kind of or ordered from all over, um, but majority this year was Johnny's and Botanical Interest. So last question we have for today, because I can tell this is getting pretty lengthy, is what got you into gardening in the first place from someone who is dying to try this year? I got into gardening because I was just trying to find something that would force me to go outside. I was starting to... I was going through a lot in my life and I was just trying to find like any new avenue that might strike my interest. So what I did was since I was going through like a lot at the time, I got a piece of paper and I wrote down just things I enjoyed 
as a kid that I might want to do as an adult. So I remembered I liked my mom's house plants a lot and I remember gardening one year and I was like, well, maybe that would be fun. Um, and so my husband got behind it because I was just really intrigued in the food systems at the time and also learning about food production and where our food came from. And the more I learned about how our food food system is the more I became passionate about wanting to grow my own so someone who grew once when she was like what age eight maybe seven I have no idea I was pretty young um decided just to start with pretty much no background because obviously I think all I did was pick some green beans and eat them we didn't do anything like when I say garden it was small it was like a planter box I really just dove in I started small and every year I continue to grow and now I'm at the point where I have definitely I definitely feel like I've outgrown this space even though we are still here um, I'm maximizing my space the best I possibly can I can't maximize it any more than I already have unfortunately last year was the last year I could really add more to this space but I think starting small and growing into it and just having the goal to be outside more really just it forced me to be outside more so like I even told my sister because she's actually like trying to garden for her second year this year I'm like it like if you don't want your plants to die you have to go outside and check and water them and now that I have this habit under my belt of constantly being outside like I miss being outside like I crave being outside during winter even which was something I never did I just I love being outside now and it's just so different from who I was in my early 20s so it's one of those things that if you're wanting to do it honestly just jump in no matter what your reason is it might be a little difficult and you might feel a little lost and hell I still feel quite lost sometimes with gardening myself I really didn't feel that confident with gardening till probably year four year five i really didn't feel like i got any type of groove until year three but i think one of the best things about gardening is just being more in tune with your food and nature and seeing all of like just seeing how everything comes together like it's so cool going from seed and then harvesting something like it really does get addicting obviously i now have an entire backyard full of garden and chickens so I hope this maybe struck your interest I know I couldn't get you all of the questions but I hope I got to a good amount and a good mix of them today if you guys have any others please leave them in the comments below I'll try to get to as many comments on this video as I possibly can but until next time I'll see you guys all next week bye